All right. Good evening, guys. Kenneth Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for November 15th, 2021. Let's get started with the market health check. So we've had um, a pretty nice little bounce here, uh, slowly grinding up after the, uh, after the slight pullback. Held support at the bottom of the river. like it's supposed to, or at the bottom of the dragon, I should say, at the edge of the river. Um, the PSAR dots have been a good, reasonable guide. There have been two pullbacks um, in this run up from the low. Um, this slight one, and then, and then this one four days ago. And in both cases, the uh, southern skin of the dragon and the... Um, uh, the PSAR dot were good. The spine of the dragon would have hit three days ago, and then a one, two, three re-entry would have gotten you back in. Um, so the southern skin of the dragon, you know, the PSAR dots to me still seem like reasonable, reasonable approaches to a relaxed swing trade in a bull market. Uh, the 10 day high raised to 461. The, uh, the PSAR dot is still cruising north. We are well above the two and a half percent, the five percent, and the seven and a half percent sell off. Um, the three period hull moving average is still pointing sharply up. The slope of the 30 regression line is still strong and uh, everything is outside of the river. So we are still trending long. We have the 30, the RL 10 and the price all north of the river. So this was a, uh, this was a vote up today. And uh, we, you know, we would take the, uh, the hull as the, um, as the mean of the short term momentum. For an extension, we're well above the um, the Bollinger Band mean, and everything looks good. Uh, we are within spitting distance of the uh, breaking out above the all time high and the uh, peak of the RL10, which would give us, you know, a reason to get long strong at 471. So um, I'm long from this one two three entry right here. And uh, everything looks good. All right, next up is the uh, sectors. Uh, so the uh, S&P was the big winner today. What am I missing here? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So of our six indexes, um, the S&P was basically flat at 0 0.03 to the good. Uh, the Dow and the Qs were microscopically down at minus 0.01% and minus 0.02%, so basically flat. Um, emerging markets down a third at minus 0.33. The Russell down four-tenths at minus 0.4%. Uh, treasuries holding above 145 at... Uh, Minus 1.26%. Let's take a look at the few things that were better um, than the market today. For sectors. So there's um, uh, blended commodities, oil, lumber, consumer discretionary, agriculture, up to uh, 0.56. You have... Um, Oil exploration at 0.68. Um, energy, commercial real estate, wheat and precious metals up between 0.8 and 1.1. Um, then individual targets that did well. Uh, Squarespace and PayPal, the disruptors, 2.5 and, and 2%. Devon Energy up 1.4. Coinbase, a disruptor up 0.7, John Deere up 0.64. It's now above 360 and, and cruising. 
Uh, so a reasonable array of energy and, and consumer staples all looking good, plus the financial disruptors. But that leaves a lot of underperformers today. So we'll take a look at those next. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So we have uh, Brazil and uh, uh, finance flat, uh, discretion, consumer discretionary tech, the other lumber down minus 0.1%, the fangs off 0.26, uh, materials 0.46, Mexico, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin trust uh, between 0.46 and 0.56. You have uh, ARC Innovation minus 0.8, VIX and Clean Energy 1.2, uh, Moonshots Blockchain down 1.3 and 1.6, respectively. Um, uh, SP Biotechs down 2.1, ARC Genomics 2.3, uh, Lithium 2.6. Um, blended large cap crypto marijuana and ethereum between 2.6 and 3.6 individual companies so here's a cluster uh, in the metals so you get cliff down 2.6 u.s steel 2.5 alcoa 2.5 tx the steel company 1.7 um so uh, bad day for steel. And then there's also Tesla down 2%, still hovering around 1,000. As long as it holds 1,000, intraday strength can be bought as a short-term intraday trade. You know, that gives you a nice strong support at the psychological level um, of 1,000. All right, let's take a look at... Um, at some work from the fellas. So uh, just a shout out to Luke, just really nice work. Um, those of you that were listening last night uh, heard us talk about his frame that was four to one to the downside and seven to one to the upside. Um, and he was in great shape with that trade frame on a swing basis. And this is what he, he nails uh, 11R today, uh, preparation. Preparation is everything. So he gets a uh, he gets a gap down, and it goes one, two, three. So he just says, "Just get short," and. Uh, it goes this far, find support, starts recovering. And he says, exit, just get paid for 0.5. I think we gave back too much in here, but still get paid. Then on the reversal, we get short again, waits for it to cross the dragon. So those two exits are not optimized by any means, but the entries are good. Um, scratch on the third one. So now he's ready to try the long side, right? Uh, so this is almost an immediate stop and reverse. Moves up all the way to just short of the VWAP and starts to roll over. Uh, doesn't lose money. Makes a fraction. Uh, tries the uh, Kata 2. We should be here instead of here. But even so, that loses a fraction. Uh, long scratch. Fractional loss. And now you got the Z3 pinch, and this thing has just got solid support. And uh, it's a beautiful Z3P. Might have added here, did add there as a second position. That one's going to earn 2.9. First position, second position, third position. 
Um, this one, I want you to get out at the uh, Bollinger, uh, not Bollinger at the uh, PSAR. And that makes this one a win instead of um, a 0.4, a bigger win. Um, I think we got to do better than that because you got three positions on. You might have squeezed instead of, I, I take that back. Maybe you did exit there. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You exited here. That's why this is a point for, that's where I was going to say, that's where I want you to exit. So he gets his first position, second position when it crosses the VWAP and it clears all this crap. So this is free and clear now. Um, and gets a third position here and a nice exit. And then the stop and reverse as it crosses the Bollinger band mean nails it gets a second position on the collapsing dragon and then a beautiful exit for another 3.1. That's 11. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we rest our case. Nicely done. All right. Here's, uh, here's Brazil. Uh, I like this. as an entry um why is this oh okay i'm sorry that was it uh, on, on the if you're going short make that a red and then make that green so we can see that that's going short because i thought you were going long and that looked like a one two three entry going long and then i was wondering why did you why did you exit there and i really this should be this should be your pcr flip and that should be a stop and reverse. And then you get all of this. I mean, this one, you get basically the Z3 breakout. But man, that's the, that's the move. That should be your second position. And then your exit should be here. So instead of a scratch, this one should be. Look, if you're getting long here, on, let's call it the PSAR flip right here, right? And then either if you play the dragon or double it up to the PSAR, let's say that's your wrist box. That's going to give you one, two, two and a half, maybe three. And then you'll get a half an R out of that one, especially if you exit here. And that changes minus 1.5 to plus 1.5. Um, this one is reasonable. You waited for it to cross the Bollinger band mean before getting short, um, a fractional gain. This one on the collapse below the Bollinger band or below the uh, VWAP should be getting short here instead of here. That makes this a scratch instead of minus 0.5. That should be a, about a scratch. And then this, when this falls through the dragon again, that should be short here. Although this is not bad. I mean, you're, you're getting the Z3 breakdown, but um, that would make this a win instead of a fractional loss. Uh, that's a long. Uh, that's a reasonable effort on the short side. I mean, it's below the VWAP, and you're looking to get down to here and to here. Um, this should be a stop and reverse, and then you get all of that. So this, with best play, this is somewhere around a plus four kind of a day. Uh, but take a look at this. Um, here's NVIDIA. This is perfectly played. Um, harsh winter. Anybody want to disagree with that? Here's your harsh winter. And now here's where it turns to spring. As it crosses, there's your PSAR flip. That is the SSC right by the numbers with a wrist box right here. Um, gets a run up and it's coming back. So he caches. This would be a reasonable. Uh, actually, this one here. This is the reasonable Kata 2, which gets you that one. But I want you to just notice the Z3 pinch breakdown. Oh, oh, collapsing dragon. Oh, Z3 pinch. 
mean, you're going to the trouble of marking off when it's abnormally pinched, and this couldn't even get to the VWAP, but instead rolled down and made a new low of the day. You should be short on that one like a fat kid on cake, and you get paid in here. So you got one R. This should be about four R today. But what I like is the SSC challenge. Take the part of the curve that is for you. Um, this one is the other one I want you to get, the higher low. And it's testing. It's getting ready to test the VWAP here. That's nice. All right, so uh, pull out your pencils. Here's tonight's quiz. All right, so uh, this sell off to here, find support. We get a PSAR flip. What's the name of that pattern? You should already know that as an SSC. So here's where, if you don't take that one, you have to get long, not later than the break above the Bollinger Band mean, because here's the VWAP. And if you're going long, you want to be south of the VWAP and you're getting, because that you're on the side of value. Um, here is a potential second entry at the top of the dragon. At the top of that dragon is a price target. And really, if this is one, that gives you one, two, three, four to the reasonable top in here. So that's about four. And then the peak here, um, you know, peak of the dragon, that gives you another one or two. And then here's another couple. So that's about eight to one unit of risk. If this breaks down, you get short instantly here, and you can add a second position there on a break of the Z3. And then just for money management, you would get short a third one here because it had the same size of that move. And uh, the last move was strong down and you're south of the VWAP. So uh, you love getting short there. All right. So decide where you want to add your second position at one, two, three, or four. And then on the short side, if this fails, would you add at five or six? And that's assuming you're going to get the, um, you're going to take the short here. Would you add a second position at five or six? All right, so lock in your notes. Yeah, let me draw the lines here real quick. Yeah, so this was these were all places where you might have added your second position. Uh, this would have been a reasonable second add because you have a gain and a it holds and then it's starting to go again. I like three because this is now breaking out above the Z3 pinch. Three is not bad because uh, it's breaking above this Z3 barrier. So that's reasonable. And four, because why not? You're above the Z3. So any one of those four, all places where you could have added a second position from your 
initial, this is your initial price. Um, this one might have gotten you out if it did. I'm not offended if you get out here at the sniper, especially if you had, you know, some number of these extra positions on, right? Because you might have had anywhere from one to four positions built. So you, you, you can't tolerate this thing uh, going negative. Uh, but then um, your re-entry should either be here when it recovers or here. Um, if you get just the one position on, that might have gotten you out. But if so, then this one should get you back in. And then there's a cot of two and another cot of two. And then um, you have reasonable exits here. Um, this one might have gotten you out so that you capture that move. But then this one should have gotten you back in. So massive goodness on that one. Um, here was my trades on this one today. So this was in, oops, this was in uh, Devon Energy. Energy was strong today. XLE was up and XLE was better than SPY. So SPY was flat, but energy was up and Devon was up double good. So here's that initial risk box, minimum manageable risk box. Um, I took the Z3. Uh, I took this one when it broke above that one, because why not? I took this exit, took the re-entry, fractional loss, re-entry, second position, third position, scratched. So I get that position. Massive goodness. You know, if this is one, that's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight on the first one, probably one, two, three, four, four on the second one and scratch. So that's 12. This one's minus one. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, this one is two, so that's about seven. Devon Energy, trading like a champ. So you should familiarize yourself with all of those patterns. And there's just, a, I mean, there's a couple symbols that really just work for us. I mean, Cliff does this, Devon Energy does this for us. EWZ can do it for us. But what's nice about these is that they are mid caps and they are very narrowly defined. This one in steel and this one is, a, uh, is in oil and energy in the US. So uh, goodness right there. You know, plus 20 will pay for a lot of false starts. Uh, here's a real quick look at the tortoise research weekend. Um, these are all the folks that are uh, preparing materials for us. Ken Hum's going to do uh, his histogram. He's been told Matt Richardson's a pro money manager is going to, he and Jim Carroll are, are taking a look at some of their crypto stuff and their, uh, some of the conservative swing and position size trades that they're doing with their clients. Jeff and Sonal from the UK um, are going to present something special. Um, Luke's going to do his histogram. Betty Holtman's doing crypto. Uh, Lisa Matthews is going to reprise the system that she did uh, from the uh, Super Trader program. Eric Morrison's going to talk about the, the Forex. They are crushing it in the Forex. And they are, they've been experimenting 
for about eight months with uh, uh, automatic scripts on Oanda, and they are paying off. And Worth Burris is working with him on that one. So um, that may be worth the price of the um, of the workshop. And anyway, just the just the crypto stuff and the currency stuff that they're doing uh, is going to be amazing. Oops, I got Worth in there twice. Sorry about that. Sorry, Worth. Uh, Kim Anderson is going to do some work on, um, uh, I think, some sideways uh, markets and her shorter term systems. Um, and I wanted to share, uh, I just uh, work with uh, Griff Cooper. Um, and uh, he's got a nice one for us. So he's pulled together. Um, he was working on the intern program with Phil Wu and they put, they went through all the foundations uh, Q and a sessions. He did July and Phil did um, April. And I asked Griff to um, pull together his lessons learned from going through every one of those Q and a sessions and documenting his lessons learned and leading to an action plan and uh, he's going to record the, the audio on this, but um, um, I thought this was so good. Uh, so he was going to highlight the lessons and the sections within those lessons that had the highest impact. When you're taking notes for other people, you end up doing a more comprehensive job in my experience than just taking notes for yourself because you want to make sure that you don't miss anything. And so he then went through that after he did all those beautiful Cornell notes like this one, uh, why swing trading was useful to him. This turned out to be a critical um, decision for him. And he started paper trading channeling and then switched to real money in January and has had positive expectancy ever since. Um, he found it very useful to go through the market types uh, on the daily charts with SPY and the risk Z in order to stay in tune. Uh, and then he worked out some things internally uh, where doing the work himself and creating his own BMR indexing system uh, and then applying that to the cryptos turned out to be instrumental for his learning. Um, he's going to record all of these, you know, his commentary on these and then the Q and a sheets that he did are going to be available too, but also the ones that he's highlighted. So we're going to give you all the Cornell note sheets, same with Phil Wu's. I want Phil to do the same thing here. Um, Griff was working on adaptive hybrid exits. And so he's now been running parallel exit strategies. One where he's looking at the weekly PSAR exit, which I really like for swing trading, and then seeing how that compares against the traditional 10% trailing stop for BMR to see if there's a uh, uh, there's an advantage. And it may be that if you go half and half, like the sniper and manager, that there's something valuable, but we'll know that. Um, and then the idea of skin in the game, um, after reading Taleb's skin in the game and listening to our commentary uh, about it, um, he found that to be a helpful um, approach to trading with putting money in there, made him pay a lot more attention to what was going on. Uh, and then he learned more about skin in the game, um, about committing to the BMR 32 system for a year with real money, forced him to really pay attention and then connect it to a psychology, which he's been working on at the VTI as well. Uh, and then the importance of uh, getting things connected to your own deep self and uh, brutal honesty, you know, unvarnished honesty, I would say. Uh, and he saw that core and position trading is the best fit for him and his lifestyle as he's completing his super trader work. And then learning to look at himself through the coach's eye, uh, what he's really looking for, he discovered when he started to do that, is that he wanted to develop stick to you know, resilience and persistence and commitment to trading to something he can realistically follow. So he's really 
setting his own expectations and managing his own performance by adopting the coaching eye. And then I asked him to uh, develop the action and accountability plan to make sure that the work that he just put in and was committing to, um, he would pick an accountability partner, his wife, best idea ever, uh, and then do monthly budgets and monthly Zoom calls um, to record those and to document work in progress, and then planning for another presentation a year from now to talk about um, the effect of doing action plans with an accountability partner and really uh, the top tasks of trading at least three times uh, a week. Um, so I just, I'm looking forward to his briefing and, um, and the work that he's done here. And I think um, we're going to be adding those kinds of uh, progress reports from uh, uh, from Griff, but also from Luke and Kim Anderson and Ken Hum and um, uh, and then Dr. Morrison with the Forex guy. So I'm really excited about um, what we're going to have here with the uh, with the uh, research weekend, um, the recordings and whatnot. So I'm pretty excited going to be good stuff. Well worth the investment, especially when you're going to get access to um, uh, some of the best ones that we've had over the last 10 years. I'm going to roll all those into the package as well. It's a steal. All right, let's take a look at um, the daily report now. All right. So still bullish normal, uh, overbought on longer term in the high range and normal for the two and the 10 day. So it's recovering nicely. Um, the risk risk on from risk uh, from the risk index and the Z score. Um, it looks like it's holding support here at the zero line, which would lead back to another one of these long swings. We're mindful that it can break down from here for sure. Anytime it gets near that zero line, we know that it can break down, but we also know that it can, uh, it can stop and reverse here as well. Even if on the, after a shallow dip, um, we're so close to the 10 day high, there's no channelings or overreactions. A bundle of dojis today, uh, a bundle of auto framers all testing out well. Disney on a 5DD and JP Morgan on a 5DD and both testing out well on the auto framer. That's some no brainer work right there. Uh, in the ETFs, uh, only four dojis and two auto framers uh, consisting of treasuries and consumer discretionary. That's a way to get exposure to Tesla, by the way. Tesla, Home Depot, and Amazon. Um, in the auto framer, um, some goodies up in here, Goldman, Disney, and Merck. Daily squeezes. Um, Brazil should still be on our list. Um, U.S. mid caps, that's a good sign. I like seeing... The S&P, even though it's not above two, it's so close that it's worth noting. And there's diamonds. And Microsoft, too, is close. So some good ones in there. Being dominated by the fall right now. Uh, I would be paying close attention to metals and mining tomorrow, especially with the the harsh sell-off in the steels, um, this would be a natural place for them to start a rebound or uh, a big collapse. So every day when they are all down together, I like trading them the next day with direction neutrality. 
you know, if, um, if I were to draw that as a picture, uh, it would basically be this kind of pattern. Um, uh, after a harsh sell-off, it terminates in like a little doji. I would put a, uh, a nice tight box around that and then be ready to play that uh, to the long side like it's going to recover or play that to the downside like there's another leg down and in either case the size of this leg is the size of this leg uh, and is also the size of that leg right so critical state in the steels right now what the uh what this big sell-off today tells you that big is it is that they are in play that there's that the emotions are high which means you're going to get uh fear to the downside and greed to the upside so whenever the energy and the emotions are up, you're going to get big moves in either direction. I think that's where we're at right now. So CLF should be awesome tomorrow again. Proctor, Chevron, and uh, Boeing today. We'll throw AXP in there as well. Weakness in Walmart and Cliff. So I'm going to be really, especially noticing what happens with Cliff tomorrow. Um, consumer staples, big winner today. Real estate is just quietly getting it done. Um, you should read what Kyle Bass wrote about the long-term prospects for real estate. He doesn't think it's overbought. He's noting that there's a, an increase of about 40% of foreign money into U.S. assets that are chasing the performance of our indexes. And those are helping to drive up the longer-term stable assets like real estate. So he doesn't see that as um, over overbought by any means yet. So uh, to me, IYR is kind of a sleeper. Uh, and definitely worth keeping your eye on IYR. It pays a dividend too, for crying out loud. Very liquid. Um, this is the pause that refreshes. We're going to see if this is going to revert back to the mean or give us one more leg up. You know, the fact that it hasn't failed is key but it also hasn't broken up it's got to break above 470 to really be good so we're going to watch to see if it can do that but if it breaks below about 464 then we got to be mindful of of this move um, all the way back here to about um, 454 okay so that's normally a, that's a warning sign right there when the slope of the 30 is crossing its 10 period that's the slope of the 30 crossing its 10, its own 10 period moving average. And it's already had one nice run up. So um, critical state, perfect trading territory. All right. That's everything we got. Everything we want to cover today. Um, we'll get this published and posted. Um, the, uh, the price on the um, uh, live uh, the research weekend is a thousand bucks. On one January, it's going up to two because it's going to give people access to uh, some of the best of our uh, previous year's uh, presentations. So um, this is your this is your opportunity to get the to get the better deal on it. Just send me an email, and I'll send you the link with a coupon. Okay. All right, take good care, guys, and we shall see you tomorrow.